In this lesson, we will work on our polishing pass. So guess what? We don't have much work to do to finish the animation. I think we're about 90% of the way there. All we have to do is tweak a few function curves, add a little bit more rotation so that the animation feels natural overall, and we're good to go. So let's go ahead and bring back our nerves curve so we can have a look at our control object. I'll turn off mesh selection at the top. And with the control selected, we'll jump to the graph editor. Now from there, let's go ahead and focus on our translate z-axis. I'll go ahead and press the F key. All right, sweet. So as the ship here starts to lift off of the surface, I think we can also have it slide forward just a bit so that it doesn't appear to be very rigid. With it just moving in one axis, it feels very robotic or mechanical instead of appearing to have thrusters that are causing this ship to lift off. So what we'll do is go ahead and take this key on frame 90 again with our translate Z channel. Let's go ahead and grab our move tool. And then from there, we'll hold down shift and start to drag this key up. Remember, by holding down shift and dragging a key, we're able to lock the key's movement either vertically or horizontally, or value or time. All right, sweet. So once we kind of lift that key up just a bit, you'll notice that the ship will start to fly forward, and now that starts to look more lifelike. Great. Next, what I'd like to do is go ahead and focus on the Translate X axis, the side to side. Let's go ahead and grab this key on 90. And if you look closely, you can see that the ship is getting really close to the rock formation. Let's go ahead and prevent that from happening so it doesn't collide. So what I'll do is go ahead and take this key on frame 90. Let's hold down shift and drag down this time to make sure it kind of pushes out first before it starts to arc around and take off. So what we get is something that looks, again, really natural. All right, fantastic. It looks like the pilot's being very careful. Now, closer to the end of the animation, here, we also have a pausing issue that we can correct. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll go to that moment in our graph editor. And you can see here the translate x axis, well, its function curve kind of dips down just a bit. It can use some work. Let's go ahead and grab the key on frame 300. We'll hold down shift and start to drag that key down just a bit to soften up the function curve. And then I'll also go ahead and take the key on 340, grab the in tangent, and middle mouse button drag over to our left to soften the function curve just a bit. And take a look at what we get now when we hit play. You'll see that the animation looks much more convincing as a result of making that minor change. Sweet! So that's all we had to do with our function curves here. Let's say we go ahead and now add a bit more rotation in our z-axis. Now, let me go ahead and show you a trick, something I like to use when wanting to focus on one axis at a time. If you were to go to your preferences underneath the time slider category, take a look, we could actually go ahead and switch our key ticks mode. Let's switch that to channel box, which allows us to focus on whatever we have highlighted in my channel box. Cool, right? So now we could just focus again on a selected channel and nothing more. You could also access the setting by right clicking on your time slider and going down to display key ticks and choosing either active or from channel box. It's getting cut off in the video, but I'll go ahead and bring up the sub menu for you. So there is channel box active. Let's go ahead and switch this to channel box here. And now we'll start to add some more tweaks to the animation while just focusing on one axis. So as it starts to lift off, let's say we go ahead and add a, a tilt over to our left on about frame 26. The reason why is because we want to create the illusion of the pilot trying to keep the ship stable. So there is going to be a little bit of rocking back and forth before that happens. Now we can go to about frame, let's say, 47, and we'll have it tilt in the opposite direction. And again, it should gradually come to a stop. 
So by the time we get to about, let's say, 68, we can go ahead and rotate it in the opposite direction, but not as much. Great stuff. So when we hit play, here's what we end up with. Again, the pilot's trying to kind of keep stability here. We've done a great job at reflecting that. Something else I'd like to do is kind of tilt the ship as it starts to veer over to our right. Now, when we highlight the channel from here, this is going to show us the actual orientation of our object. So you can see that our z-axis is about to overlap with the x-axis, and this is known as gimbal lock. When two axes overlap and we lose control in one axis, we can run into flipping this way if we're not careful. And you can learn more about this in Introduction to Animation, as well as Introduction to Rigging. But I think we'll be pretty safe with the tweak that we need to make here. You'll notice flipping when you start to rotate your object in a very drastic way. But in this case, the rotation is very subtle. Let's go ahead and grab our Rotate tool, and we'll just make sure that we are using Object Mode here. By the way, if we switch over to Gimbal Mode, this is what we would see when we highlight a channel in the Channel Box. So I'll just go ahead and hold down the E key, the left mouse button, and switch back to Object Mode. And here on About Frame, let's say 130, we'll go ahead and tilt our aircraft over to our right. Fantastic. And then, on About Frame 182, we'll go ahead and have it tilt in the opposite direction. Again, as the pilot tries to kind of keep this stable, I think I rotated it a bit too much. So I'll go ahead and jump to that keyframe. Again, we can go ahead and use our animation playback controls to jump to a key that we've just made. Let's just go ahead and tilt it in the opposite direction a bit more. Fantastic. So now it's not as drastic. All right, sweet. And then, before it starts to fly away, let's say we do this. We'll highlight our rotate channels so we can see exactly where all of our keys are. And on about frame 300, we'll add another tilt here. Let's go ahead and rotate the ship over to our left in the z-axis. And that's just so that it's not pointed straight. It looks very natural as it starts to take off. Wonderful stuff. So at this point, we can go ahead and play the animation back. If you need to, go ahead and hide your control object so you can just focus on the animation and nothing more. You have nothing to distract you now. So when we hit play, we get some really nice movement that you should be proud of, and it didn't take much time to do this. Sweet. So now it starts to kind of fly off, and there you have it. Fun stuff. Well, that is going to finish up our polishing pass. So guess what? We can now go ahead and move on to animating a camera in the next lesson.